Hi, this is Kerry Garrison with CameraDojo.com, and today we're going to take a look at doing post-production white balance correction with Adobe Photoshop Lightroom. So here I've imported a handful of pictures that have some severe white balance problems going on. So we'll see exactly how to correct these. So there's a couple things we can do. First, we can just come over and try the auto settings, which in most cases are going to work pretty well in Lightroom. It does a pretty good job of trying to figure it out. It may not be quite perfect, so you know you can warm it up a little bit, you can cool it off a little bit. Uh, there's a number of different ways of, of trying to get the right idea, but just sometimes you have to play with the tint as well. You know, you can also try grabbing the little eyedropper here, the white balance tool, and trying to select kind of a neutral color. Well, people think that you can just use white, and white's actually a fairly poor color to choose. So what you want to do is, is have a gray card and get a shot of a gray card first. But what we did is we're using a color right. Now, what a color right is, it's kind of like an Expo disc. There's another brand of it. It's a filter that goes over the lens. You take a picture with it to get kind of an image like this, and then you set the auto white balance in your camera. Here's an image of the color right filter. You hold this in front of your lens, you take a picture of the area that you're trying to shoot, and then use your white balance setting on your camera. Well, if you don't know how to do that, the other way is to get the image and then use Lightroom in post-production. Sometimes that's a little faster if you're going through a lot of different color temperature changes in one particular shoot, such as what happens at a wedding or a reception where you may be indoors, outdoors, and your white balance may be changing a lot. For every scene, throw that up, get a quick shot, and then we can see how to use that within Lightroom. You can do the same thing with a Y-ball card or a gray card or uh, the digital calibration filters. There's a number of different things to use to get that white balance setting. So what do you do with it once you're in Lightroom? Well, here's an image taken with the color right. And we can just come over here and just pick kind of the center of the image. It's going to tell us that our color temperature is 5,000 Kelvin, and we probably want to bump the tint by 7. So now if we come over here, I'm going to select that one first, and I'll select that. Now I'm going to use the sync option. I'm just going to sync the white balance. That'll apply it to that, and we'll get what should be the optimum white balance. Again, here's another one. This image is way too cool, so we're going to select this one. We've already selected the white balance option in here. I'm going to select the next picture and click on Sync White Balance. You can see how that image changes, and now we have very vibrant colors, good color sky, good color whites, that worked really well. Going in the opposite direction, this image is way too warm. So we'll just select that image again, go to sync, and synchronize. And again, now we have perfect colors. Now you don't have to do it with just one. Once you have that one selected, you can select a handful of other images and sync them all at the same time. This way you can do an entire group of shots all at one time. So when doing post-production, you want to make sure that you have a good white balance reference, whether again a Y-ball card using a color ride, an Expo disc, or a gray card, and then you can use that sync option to sync that white balance across multiple images. This has been another tutorial from CameraDojo.com.